The title of the book is Financial Inclusion for Poverty Alleviation, Issues and Case Studies for Sustainable Development. And the book was uh, co-edited by, by my colleague, Dr. Zeneb Basha Oragushi from the Swiss Help of Us Intercorporation. Uh, but first of all, let me take a moment to explain what we mean by financial inclusion. What makes this book different from the current discourse of financial inclusion is the fact that at the moment financial inclusion is understood as either simply having a bank account or having access to microcredit. In this book, our view or approach towards financial inclusion is much more wider and more holistic. What we mean by financial inclusion in the book is that financial services and products need to be a affordable, usable, and at the same time suitable. So uh, what this means is that um, a number of people, particularly low-income groups and marginalised communities, I'm talking about almost 3 billion people of the world population do not necessarily have access to suitable and affordable financial products and services. And I think it's very timely now that we talk extensively or hold debates and provide platforms for people to discuss about the importance of financial inclusion now. Financial inclusion has um, received uh, increasing attention by uh, development practitioners and policy makers as of late. Um, a manifestation of that is the fact that financial inclusion is identified as one of the key targets in the sustainable development goals as a vehicle um, to enable people to propel themselves out of the poverty trap. So essentially, the way we understand financial inclusion uh, has to be just beyond microfinance and uh, opening bank accounts. We need to A, understand the heterogeneity of those uh, users, in particular the low-income groups and uh, marginalised sections of the society who do not necessarily have access to a number of services such as land, education, etc. Um, we need to understand the key constraints that they face day to day and uh, our financial products and services need to be able to cater to the needs of these groups. Essentially what happens most of the time is financial services and products are designed in the same fashion that they are designed in the high streets of London or Paris or New York. But it shouldn't be that way. We need to understand the reality on the ground, particularly that these poor people face, and tailor um, the, our financial products and services in such a manner. The second element um, that we need to look at or need to understand is the fact that even though people are financially excluded, it does not necessarily mean they are financially inactive people are able to save, make transactions, or even spend money or manage their expenditure, etc. So financial exclusion doesn't necessarily mean financial inactivity. They are in fact financially very, in, very active groups of the society. However, the lack of access to such kind of you know, inclusive financial services and products has forced them to um, depend on very expensive um, or extortionist uh, uh, financial uh, service providers. Uh, and as a result, they have not been able to attain the full potential, their full potential in terms of uh, um, not necessarily withstanding shocks, be it economic or climatic, but also to be able to prosper and uh, permanently be able to propel themselves out of poverty. Most importantly, uh, one thing we need to understand is financial inclusion does not happen in a vacuum. We need to have the right institutions in place that enable financial inclusion to happen. For instance, um, we're talking about about 3 billion of the world population who do not necessarily have access to financial products and services. This is a, a significant opportunity for the private sector to be able to 
provide suitable and affordable and usable financial products and services. But for that to happen, I think the role of governments or institutions to provide incentives for the private sector to extend their services to these groups is very important. Also equally important is when we talk about financial inclusion, we need to talk beyond just providing the service, but also improving the financial literacy of the section of the society as well, in terms of you know how do you manage risk, for instance, or how do you manage expenditure, or how do you manage you know your debt servicing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think we need to look at the entire financial ecosystem, just beyond the demand and supply. We need to look at the entire financial ecosystem, which looks at uh, institutions, local power structures, but at the same time the the capacities as well, such as you know, financial literacy and risk management. All these elements need to be looked at as, as one entity, as opposed to simply focusing on the demand and supply of financial services and products.